Welcome everybody to the second edition of Leaf Talk with Tyler. I am your host, Tyler Hill, and today I want to talk about a few things that happened over the trade deadline yesterday in Toronto. First things I want to talk about is the addition of Ryan O'Byrne. What you're going to notice about Ryan O'Byrne is that when you look at his stats at first, there's not a lot there. He hasn't put up a lot of points, but that's okay because he's a defenseman. And when you look at some of the stats that you don't see normally on the front list there, you're going to notice that he has a lot of blocked shots. And that's big when it comes to the Leafs, because that's one thing they really needed to address, was to get their number of shots down. Bringing in a defenseman like this could help that immensely. He has 141 block shots last season with the Colorado Avalanche, and he only played 74 games, which was a career high for him. Aside from blocking a lot of shots, another thing this guy can really do is put the body on. With 180 hits last year, he was second on the Colorado Avalanche in hits. And I hope he can bring a physical presence like that to the Leafs. Because with our inexperienced defense, that's going to be major. Also, speaking of inexperience, this guy has played 19 playoff games and is now the 11th player on the Leafs to have any playoff experience. So on a roster of 23 guys, less than half of the Leafs have been in the playoffs. So bringing this guy to the team gives us a little bit more experience. The biggest news in Toronto yesterday may not have been the trade they made for Ryan O'Byrne. It may have been the trades they didn't make. As you know, going into the trade deadline yesterday, there was a lot of speculation in Toronto. Names like Tyler Bozak, Clark MacArthur, Roberto Luongo, Mika Kiprasov. Big names going in and out. And what happened? Nothing. Not a damn thing. Why, though? If you were watching Trade Center on TSN yesterday, you may have heard early in the morning that Mika Kiprasov took his name off the table, saying he had no interest in being traded anymore. He instead wants to finish his career in Calgary this year and then retire at the end of the season, which is fine by me, because I did not want this guy coming to Toronto. His numbers have not been impressive at all this year. I truly think if he had come to Toronto, it would only hurt us going down the stretch, because James Reimer has been really impressive, and I've been really happy with the way he's been playing. And honestly, I don't know why the Leafs general managers thought they needed to go out and get a veteran goalie. There's been plenty of rookie goalies or goalies that have no playoff experience going into the playoffs that have made decent runs with the teams that they're with. It's not just who you have between the pipes, it's who you got out front. And that brings me to my next point, Tyler Bozak. A lot of speculation because he's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. He's not going anywhere either. Why? Because the Leafs recognize that they need this guy on their team. He's been their top centerman and top face-off guy for the past two seasons, maybe a little bit longer, arguably. But right now, they've got Bozak, they've got Kadri, and they've got Grabowski in his $5.5 million contract. You can't go with Kadri at number one because he's still young in his career. This is his first real full season, kind of, even though it's been cut short by a lockout. But it's his first time he's played all the games with the NHL club, and you can't expect him to go into the playoffs ready to take over a number one job. And Grabowski has just not been putting up the numbers this year to be a number one centerman. The other unrestricted free agent was Clark MacArthur, who's been in this situation before. If you remember, at the end of 2010-2011 season, his very first season as a Leaf, he was scheduled to become an unrestricted free agent. What happened? Didn't go anywhere, signed a new contract with the Leafs at the end of the season, and I would fully expect him to do that this year because he got the A and this is a MacArthur jersey. That's why that's on here. Clark MacArthur may also be one of the most underrated players on the Leafs roster right now. A lot of people don't talk about MacArthur. A lot of people don't wear MacArthur jerseys. But if you look at his stats, he's been a consistent 20-goal scorer since coming to Toronto in 2010 and also a plus player in all except his first season. Right now, he's sitting at a plus six, which is one of the Leafs' best ratings right now. And let's not forget, Wednesday morning, Clark MacArthur was medically cleared to play, which means he should be back in action really soon with the Leafs, ready to put up those numbers again. As of right now, he's got 17 points in 30 games with the Leafs, and I'm sure when he comes back, he'll be putting up those numbers again. I almost forgot to mention Roberto Luongo, who despite being the number one piece of trade bait yesterday, didn't get moved. It is, however, rumored that in the last hour of the trade deadline, Vancouver made three calls to Toronto trying to get him over there. But Dave Nonis had to say no when names like Ben Scrivens, Tyler Bozak, along with multiple draft picks were mentioned in those deals. That's a smart move by Nonis. We need to be thinking about the future of this club, not the right now. The right now is fine. We're in fifth place in the East. Why fix it if it isn't broken, right? That's the old saying. And the big question after the deadline is where do the Leafs stand now? And the answer is... I don't know. Nobody knows, other than fifth place right now. 
We've got a great goaltending situation with James Reimer being a solid number one and Ben, ben Scrivens being a more than capable backup goaltender. We've got awesome offense with guys like Tyler Bozak, Nazem Kadri, Joffrey Lupul, Clark MacArthur, Phil Kessel. I could go on and on. And now we have a much more solid defensive core. When you look at a guy like Ryan O'Byrne, he could help bring down those block shots. Well, not bring down the block shots. Help bring down our shots against by blocking the shots. This is going to be a good season and possibly a good playoff run for the Leafs if we can keep up how we're playing right now. We've got 12 games left in the season. We can go 50-50 on those, win six. We should be in a solid playoff spot. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Leaf Talk with Tyler. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video. Leave a comment down below. Follow me on Twitter where I'll be tweeting live during all the Leaf games. You can find that link down below. Also, check out my blog, also down in the link below. And go Leafs go!